It's community contest to boys and girls, and this time we're talking about monster slaying. We had to kill, or not we, you guys had to kill two of each mob there is out there. We're talking about all these mobs right here. Hives, hellhounds, water devils, moliators, all that shit. And we're talking about a $70 prize pool as well. We're topping up from last time, and we had a ton of good submissions. People were eager to help in and, you know, try their best to be the winner this time. So, yeah, killing two of each mob and then finishing it off with a explosion. Hard finding a safe spot out there. You guys have to clean away those exploding barrels as well. So, we had a lot of discussions, both in our Discord and among us, and a bit on Facebook as well. What kind of loadout is the best one and what route might be the best one? And you can see a couple of different going into the runs right here. We saw Silent versus Loud and uh, Dynamites, Two-Handed Weapons, even the Poison Crossbow. That's not usually wor uh, used there right in the bio. But let's go ahead and take a look at two of our first runners. We're talking about the top runners, of course. And let's see how they did it, huh? So here you can see Dustin and King Pathan, both of them uh, sticking to uh, silenced weapons right now. One is using a windfield silencer and uh, another uh, one of them gun silenced. I can't remember all the names. And I got a little uh, count counter down there so you guys can see how far they are on their mission before they have to find that barrel and blow it up. That's a yellow or a red barrel like this one right there. And uh, we had discussions on, you know, our Discord, and we had discussions on Facebook, and amongst us the runners, uh, not me, of course, I don't have to run, it's my contest, that, uh, what kind of loadout should you need? Someone said, yeah, like uh, Dustin here, that a two-handed weapon would be nice to hit down most of the mobs, like emulators, if you hit them right, they do die to one attack, and so does those armored. All these uh, monsters have all their weakness, different weaknesses, but uh, most of them uh, die easily to like a stick bomb right there, but you can't carry stick bombs for everything. So most people carry stick bombs for the meatheads only, and use their loadouts for the rest of them, using uh, flares or fuses, like you see Dustin have here, to put out... Uh, those uh, armored or those halves while uh, using the axe for other things and uh, like grunts and hellhounds and maybe even uh, those meatheads if you can't hit them properly because sometimes you miss miss with those dynamites also a two-handed weapon like an axe will one shot those water devils and there's a difference in uh, going loud and there's uh, a very big difference actually like these guys are trying to do with silenced weapons because you have to do this run while there are other hunters out there trying to you know play regularly with us that's kind of shit anyways and if you do make too much noise they will be hot on your ass trying to take you down you can bet your sweet little ass on that right there but sooner or later you have to do those big explosions with a uh, Stickies, you know, meatheads. And that's, uh, yeah, of course, the runners are always uh, on the move, so uh, they will move away from where they just were. But still, they try to make it sound there. And uh, these two runners right now are not in big trouble. They're not being shot at. But I do know for a fact when I checked Dustin's video, there were hunters close on his ass all the time. They were actually following him. Now you can see they are finding uh, their respective mobs slowly but surely right now. Not so slow slowly, of course, they are uh, amongst the top runners. But uh, you can be lucky with the spawns, and you can be unlucky. You don't really know. And uh, But th there are those mobs that, uh, you know, were difficult to find. You have the water devils, you have to plan the runs for those. 
They are always hidden in those waters, but not always spawn them. Also, emulators and armor. Those guys uh, might be troublesome. Sometimes the uh, hellhounds do, but grunts you find everywhere, hives mostly everywhere, meatheads, you are most of the time going to find one in each compound. Sometimes you might be unlucky and uh, don't get no, but those times are probably when other hunters have been there before you. And you can see King Python here, he has a, he has a shotgun too. Uh, that's to finish off uh, Water Devils pretty quickly. While wow, Dustin he went full on yeehaw and jumped in there. Now, you can see Dustin, he just finished his last monster right now. Now he has to find a red or a red, no, red or a yellow barrel to blow it up. This might not always be the easiest. You know, you're not that used to looking for those barrels all the time last mission. Found a barrel, but that, that's a green one. He realizes it. And then sees a red one in the horizon there. As the explosion goes off, he watched the time. Congratulations, Dustin. You took fifth place in Sheriff Hardon's community contest number two. While King Python here is real happy to see that emulator. You can see he was pinging a lot when he saw it. Those guys, you know, those, those can be tricky. And now he has to find a barrel too. He figured uh, Arden Parish over there would be the closest one. And keeping his eye up for the red barrel. There it is. And waiting for that explosion. Could have shot it once more to make it explode faster. Getting an 0523. Congratulations, boys. Fifth and sixth place. That's pretty good. But now, as you guys saw, it was fifth and sixth place. That means there are four guys faster than these guys, and Dustin he had a 0451. As we discussed, how long can you really go on time, killing two of each mob and then finding a barrel to blow it up? There, uh, these guys are a bit faster when it comes to third and fourth. We are talking 04 and below right now. These guys were dedicated and. Uh, practice runners. They had a bit of a different loadout and uh, you can probably see that uh, it might be the most e efficient loadout because some of them they changed from the silent to the, to the more loud but also they brought along the hand crossbow with poison and the hand crossbow it kills both armored and emulators uh, of course even uh, grunts and shit like that but armored and emulators especially those die to one shot from the poison crossbow that means you only have to deal with water devils and a good shotgun can do the trick right there but also you have those regular sticker bombs with uh you know with meat heads let's take a look at what they have um, bringing compared to those other guys and how they did things Right here we have Mr. Rickline and Infog Wolf. We're talking third and fourth place right here. And quickly you can see Mr. Rickline being lucky spawning next to Water Devils. Now he doesn't have the planners route anymore when it comes to water. Mr. Infog Wolf here is uh, just running into what feels like one of the best compounds, getting both emulator and hive early. Mr. Rickline is just finishing uh, from his spawn. Moving onwards. Yeah, most of the time we saw that uh, Wolf's Head Arsenal often brought with it uh, a lot of mobs that you needed. They have armored inside, often emulators and meatheads outside, and hives everywhere. Only, uh, also, there's a lot of uh, rivers nearby with uh, water devils. Mr. Rick Lion here, in the meanwhile, got his meathead and still looking for those elusive ones. Finding hellhounds right here. You can see Info Wolf uh, actually have to uh, kill a lot of unnecessary mobs too, but he got another armor as well. 
These are the things Mr. Red Lion Hair is missing. Emulators and armored. You have to be on the lookout for, for those. Also, it gets both of the Hellhounds as well now. Like uh, Mr. Red Lion already found. Moving onwards to try to find the next compound. While Mr. Red Lion Hair is fighting a... Uh, I'm afraid a bit unnecessary battle right here, but it's not his choice. Oftentimes those mobs came running, just like it happened to Infog Wolf and Wolf's Head Arsenal. Have to defend your ass, not to, you know, get uh, finished out there before finishing them first. Infog Wolf and uh, Mr. Uh, Rickline both are in Fort Karmic right now. That's a nice place to search for. Uh, a lot of those uh, big monsters as well. Emulators and armor and meat uh, meatheads everywhere. Mr. Rick Lion is having his luck right now. But still missing one emulator and armored and meathead. Infog Wolf, as you can see, is doing well as well. But he's still missing those water devils. That's something he has to account for later on in his run. And he's moving towards the wall right now. While Mr. Rick Lion got too armored and just needs one more emulators. I've seen plenty of runs and those emu emulators, they can mess up a whole bunch of things. When you don't want them, they spawn by the thousands and when you do want them, they're as elusive as fuck. So right now, he's like searching high and low while Infog Wolf found a water devil and uh, waits for the spawn on the ne next one. Tried to find on the, another river. And Mr. Rick Lion, he found this last water dove right there. Now all he has to find is a barrel. He's sitting there yelling for him, where's that goddamn barrel right now? Infog Wolf, he needs one emulator and one armor right now. That's usually nearby because it's closing in on Sweet Bell Flower. And Mr. Rick Lion found his barrel and it blew up. Congratulations on prize money on third place. 0334 there, Mr. Rick Lion. That's a real nice time. There, Infog Wolf found his last armor. Now all he is missing is that, you know, elusive emulator, like always. I mean, in my experience, those really are the guys you start to hate, hate the most. And there we have it, luckily for him, and there's the barrel. Finishing off. And fourth place with 0409. Congratulations, Infog Wolf. Even though you don't get the money, that's a good time and that's a good place. And now we are ready for the finalists. And of course, many of you already know the names of the guys who have been doing well in this contest. What? But we are talking about Mr. Jassy Ginger and that warm pug. Some of you might know the uh, name that one pug already. He is the runner up from the first contest. And it's no, not a coincidence. He's a very dedicated guy and he prepared well for this. Mr. Jassy Ginger is a new, but uh, he has proven to be quite the competitor. And these two guys went uh, at it from the get go. Like from the very start of the tournament, Jassy Ginger hit me with a 0605, and that's okay. That's that's pretty nice. I was suspecting some of the good run, run, run good runs to go down to a you know lower uh, five minutes maybe at the best. I, I really didn't have no experience with this shit, but then one pug answered right back with a 0521. And Mr. Jesse Ginger, well, he, he wouldn't stand for that, even though he's a criminal. He told me, you know what, Mr. Sheriff, I got something you won't believe. And that might be, because you're a criminal. Of course I won't believe you. But this time I got proof, he tells me. And it shows me a video. And it's 0321. What? That can't be. And I checked. And I ride a... He's killing the hives and moliators and water devils left and right. But you know what? He finished that one with a green barrel. 
not a red or a yellow one. And you can't be doing that, because it's in rules. You have to have a big ass explosion to finish it off. That's important. So I said, sorry, partner, that won't do. You're off. You have to make a new one. And in the meanwhile, Mr. Puggy is grinding it down and down and down. He's pulling up a 0350. Still worse than the, you know, the green barrel thing that Jesse Ginger gave me. But it's a 03. It's below 4. And uh, of course it's uh, it's above Mr. Rick Lance, but it, it's still going down. And that's when both of those boys decide to turn it up for real. They had uh, been practicing their loadouts, they knew their locations, and they planned their runs real good. And they started looking for those perfect opportunities, and they got them by the scores. That's what you get when you grind and grind. Let's take a look what happened, right? And here we have Jassy Ginger versus that one perk in the finals. Fighting it out for first and second place. Jassy Ginger spawns on the bottom uh, right of Rosen Delta, while that one perk spawns at the bottom in the middle. Jassy Ginger here has an early hive and an early emulator. Very important to get those emulators out of the way. Both are using shotguns and poison crossbows. Also, they have flare guns and derringers for that uh, quick other stuff they need. One pug here has to run a bit to close up, but there's a whole bunch of mobs right over here. Jassy Ginger is lucky to get those water devils early. He's a bit impatient, impatient right here, though. He doesn't have to uh, want to wait for the, that uh, respawn, so he goes to catch that meathead in the meanwhile, losing a couple of seconds there. While one pug is starting his grind right now, getting emulators and fatties all over the place right now, ignoring mobs. He you know, doesn't want to have to fight unnecessarily and use more time. But Jesse Ginger also has some luck on his side. Those dogs came running without him, you know, calling for them. Those dogs can also be elusive sometimes. Stacking up mobs left and right, both of them. Now Puggy has both of those meatheads. It's out of the way, in one compound. That's good luck right there. Both are still searching and going on that, uh, onto the next compound. As I told you earlier, if you can do the run in two compounds, that's a winner. Puggy finishes off two Water Doves quickly, while Jesse Ginger has a second emulator. Now he's missing two armored and two meatheads. While that one Pug is also getting what he needs. He's only missing armored and hellhounds. And right there he got his hellhounds. Now they are both myth missing those armored, but um, Jesse Ginger also misses one meathead. But they are getting to that second compound right now. And as you can see, Jesse Ginger finds his first armor. Now they are both missing two mobs. Of course, you can't see it or hear it, but Jesse Ginger heard a fatty right there. And that one pug found his armor right there. Jesse Ginger knows there's a spawn on an armor here sometimes, and he finds it. Now he, all he has to do is find that barrel. And he found it right outside. Congratulations, Jassy Ginger, on being the first place in Hard Owns Community Contest number two. That one perk is still world searching, and he finds his second almond right there looking for that barrel. But there can only be one at the top, and he's he quite ahead, as you can see right now. O239. We weren't sure if it was possible to get below three minutes, but Jesse Ginger, he proved it. And if I had no video, I wouldn't believe it. That one perk runner up on 307. And congratulations, Jesse Ginger. You are the winner of $40, second place for you, that one perk, $20. And third place for Mr. Rick Lan with $10. You guys are amazing. You did your job well, and their sheriff is proud of you guys.